Hello, and welcome to the 10th episode of the Flow Academy series, and this is the last episode of the series. I hope that your personal LMS build is going well, I, I and I really hope that this series has provided you as much value as possible with how to utilize WISD, Xano, and Webflow all together. That being said, in this last episode, we will be focusing on the account settings page. So it's this one right here. We're not going to be covering um, the request and the action. So again, what I mean by that is the setup for this. I'm just gonna quickly walk through the Webflow build and head over to Xano and just wrap it up over there. Um, so over here, as you can notice, as, you, uh, as you'll see, we have our um, details pre-filled into our form. So if you find yourself having to adjust your um, uh, adjust your account information here, uh, you can do that with ease. Let's say that instead of, oh no, I'm gonna call this, change this to Charlie. So as soon as I hit on save changes, you'll notice that you know the update immediately uh, up, you, updates everything over onto our UI as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to Onnoy. Awesome. And then we have our uh, air here, uh, sorry, our success wrapper here. So if I were to, let's say, remove this, try to save that. So you, you'll notice that it doesn't go through and instead it just ends up breaking our UI. So I'm gonna reload this page and there we go. So everything is back to normal. So um, another thing that I wanted to, I completely forgot to point out, based now on your LMS system, uh, one thing, one crucial thing that I haven't really covered is in the event where you find yourself having to change your email, uh, it should also adjust that email over onto your Stripe, uh, onto your Stripe database as well, which is something that I have not covered. Uh, in this demo, which is something that should be uh, covered in a real LMS app. So I'm not sure why I didn't do that, but I should have. But uh, I suppose I will cover that in a future tutorial for a different uh, series. But yeah, just thought I'd give you that heads up there. Uh, that being said, let's head over onto our Webflow. So our over onto our Webflow, we actually have two div blocks here. We have our skeleton loader div block, and then we have our actual content div block right here. Again, this setting resembles exactly the build that we had over on for our login page, for our create an account page, and reset password and request password. So the build is entirely the same. The only difference is we didn't have a skeleton loader for those forms there, but we do for this one right here. Um, apart from that, again, everything on Webflow stays the same. Now let's jump over onto our Xano endpoint. At the time of making this, Xano recently updated their UI to dark mode, which looks really cool. Uh, however, I'm finding myself um, a little struggling to adjust to this uh, because when I'm reviewing the actions and the functions, it kind of throws me off. But I'm I'm sure you know I'll get over it very soon. Uh, for Xano, we are going to be focusing on this endpoint right here, which is the only endpoint that we have not focused on so far. So let's click into this. Now, this is a very straightforward function, uh, very straightforward API endpoint setup right here. For our inputs, we have the first name, last name, email, and password. So if I click into this, um, just wanted to point out that the email, the last name, and the first name has been marked as required. So we do need those. So we, yeah, that's something to point out. So that's what we have for the inputs. Let's look into our function stack. So the first function we have is a conditional where we're checking if the password is empty or not. We're making sure that the password is not null. So based on that condition right there, we have two scenarios. We have then and then we have else. So let's see what, what we are doing if the password is null. So Let's see, we're getting the record from our user's database. Again, by now you already know how we're accomplishing this. So let's move on to our second function here, which is edit record in the user's database. And we're returning this as user updated. So we're trying to find the record that this relates to. Once we do find the record, we connect the uh, columns to our input here. So first name is to first name, last name for last name input, 
email to email and the password for password. Another thing that you will notice is that we have this filter called first not empty. So the reason why we're using this filter right here is because when you are replacing the data on a given column, let's say first name, last name, uh, Again, um, uh, this might sound a little confusing, but the filter here makes sure that it's replacing the data properly. And uh, whenever you're changing the, info, the data for one single column, it doesn't end up wiping out the entire record, the entire row of information for that specific record, which is why we're using the first not empty filter for email, for last name, and the first name. So yeah, again, if it's not clear, please let me know in the comment section. But uh, that's essentially what we're doing in this function right here. Awesome. And once we have done that, we are updating our variable. And let's see what we have here. So we are targeting our user. OK, so user updated full name. OK, so we're basically targeting this, uh, yeah, this record right here. And we're adding the key of full name. And basically, we are grabbing the first name uh, and concatenating that with the last name. So that's what we're doing for the event if the password is empty. And if the password is not empty, again, we're doing the same thing, but uh, it's just the edit record is a little different. We actually don't target the password no more. The reason why we're creating a conditional is because if I head over to the live app here and head over to our account settings, actually, I'm just going to get rid of that. So let's say that. Um, you know, your your password is not pre-filled. So for the event that you do put in your password, uh, we want to make sure that we're grabbing all the existing information correctly or the modified information correctly. So that's why we have a conditional, just in case if you're sending a Xano request with or without a password. Therefore, we have that conditional right here. So that is that for our Xano side of things. And that being said, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Um, yeah, that was that was quite a complex build that we have accomplished. And I'm I'm super excited to see. And uh, yeah, please let me know. Please share your thoughts on what you thought think of this series so far. I know this has been quite a complex build, so uh, it's not going to be an easy one. Uh, if there are anywhere that you might be stuck in uh, with the build, please reach out to me. I'm sure that there might be something that I can help you out with. Hopefully you enjoyed this course and um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this and uh, have a great day.